The electronic controller allows for the rapid automation of a refrigeration unit. This automation controls the activation of the compressor, evaporator fans, condenser, and defrost resistance. Let's see how it works. 1. The equipment shown on the screen has two temperature sensors. 2. One detects the temperature of the refrigerated load. The other detects the presence of freezing and monitors the temperature. 3. Internally, the electronic controller has transistors or electronic switches that control the power supply. 4. For example, when the thermistor detects a temperature higher than required, the switch that controls the power to the compressor and evaporator fan closes. 5. As the refrigeration circuit operates, the temperature inside the equipment starts to decrease until it reaches the value required by the user. At that moment, the temperature sensor detects the temperature and stops the compressor, opening the electronic circuit. 6. However, the electronic fan continues to operate, so the switch that controls it remains closed. 7. As the temperature inside the equipment increases, the temperature sensor detects the value, and sends a signal to the electronic controller to close the compressor switch and turn the equipment back on. 8. This cycle repeats several times. However, if the program defrost time is reached, or the defrost sensor detects a very low temperature, the controller stops the operation of the compressor and fan. 9. Then, the electronic switch is closed to initiate the activation of the defrost resistance, and eliminate frost from the evaporator. 10. Once the user program time is reached or the regular temperature is achieved, the controller opens the electronic switch, stopping the flow of current to the resistance and turning it off. 11. Finally, the controller turns on the compressor and, subsequently, the evaporator fan. Here are the 10 steps to perform the installation of the full gauge TC900E power controller. 1. Prepare the panel or cabinet where the controller will be installed. Cut an opening of 71 by 29 mm with a tolerance of plus or minus half a millimeter. 2. Insert the controller into the cutout and secure it using the side clips. Ensure that the clips exert the proper pressure on the rubber gasket to prevent leaks. 3. Connect power to the controller based on the model. A. Use pins 9 and 10, neutral and line respectively, for the controller powered with 115 volts AC. Also, supply terminals 12 and 16 with the line cable, in this case, 115 volts. B. Use pins 9 and 11, neutral and line respectively, for the controller powered with 230 volts AC. Also, supply terminals 12 and 16 with the line cable, in this case, 230 volts. C. Use pins 9 and 10, for the controller powered with 12 volts AC or DC. Also, supply terminals 12 and 16 with the neutral cable from the 115 or 230 volt power, as applicable. D. Use pins 9 and 11, for the controller powered with 24 volts AC or DC. Also, supply terminals 12 and 16, with the neutral cable from the 115 or 230 volt power, as applicable.
4. Connect the cable from sensor S1, ambient temperature sensor, to terminals 1 and 2. Ensure this sensor is placed in the environment to be controlled. Five. Connect the cable from sensor S2, evaporator temperature sensor, to terminals 3 and 4. Secure the sensor to the evaporator with a metal clamp. 6. If using a digital input or a third sensor, connect it to terminals 5 and 6 according to the program function. 7. You can use Terminal 7 and 8 to connect a switch. 8. Connect the load power cables to the respective outputs. A. Compressor. Use Terminal 15 for the primary power, and take the other power directly from the supply, considering that the line should go directly to the compressor common. 2. B. Defrost resistance. Use terminal 14 for the primary power, and take the other power directly from the supply, considering line and neutral, respectively. 3. C. Fans. Use terminal 17 for the primary power, and take the other power directly from the supply, considering line and neutral. 9. Program the controller parameters according to the application requirements. Ten. Power up the controller and verify its operation.